Now, I think I know these, but you're going to tell me if it's a myth or not. All right, here we go. That's the good. first myth, banking calories. Skip eating all day before a big meal so you don't overeat later. Is that a myth or not? In fact, it is. You really, this is a bad idea. Pati uh, p especially here at Green Care Medical, where we see patients, you know, we tell them everything in moderation. You can try to go ahead and bank calories, but what often happens is you're hangry, and then you overeat. And then after you overeat, you wind up taking in more calories than if there was sort of a calorie awareness attitude throughout the day. But the long and short of everything is, you know, don't be a chaza and uh, moderation throughout the day. Okay, moderation. I hear you on that one. It's hard, easier said than done. Yes, no, I understand. I All right, here we go. Next up. Ooh, desserts made with alcohol. So, like tiramisu. Can you get tipsy enough to get a DUI? Or maybe rum cake, if there's a lot of rum in the cake. So let's talk about this. Interesting that a, this all comes from a study that was just done in Europe, and apparently they must have higher alcohol contents in Europe. But it was true that two tiramisus, if huge portions, you'd have to really eat two big portions, but in fact, it could. Um, it's a, a myth that alcohol gets burnt off, especially if we talk about baking. It doesn't all get burnt off. And I think oh. the more important point is the addition of alcohol on top of the alcohol that you're already drinking. And I think together, yes, that could be a problem, but in of itself, to eat the enough desserts to get you drunk, you got to eat a lot, a lot of desserts. Okay, so then we're kind of safe. I think so, yeah. Okay, now moderation. Again, moderation. Moderation. Okay, all right, we got a theme going on here. How about this one? Swapping sweets, okay? Things like maybe an apple cobbler uh, for healthier dessert, or is that a healthier dessert than a creamy lemon meringue pie? Uh, it's got apples in it, lots it, of fiber. Right, right. It, it's that's uh, exactly. It has fruit, like what you tell <laughs> kids, yeah. No, I mean, it is true that the meringue doesn't have the crust that has the butter in it. It's made with eggs versus something that's a heavier butter-filled and heavier sugar-filled thing. So, again, if between the two it's healthier, obviously neither of them are really healthy. And to limit sugars is probably one of the things you really need to do yeah. to really change diet more than anything else. That's what every, all of these, we've had so many people on the show over the course of time. And the bottom line, I think, between all of them is, is less sugar. Right. It sugar is, you know, is the addicted. devil. Yes, you're addicted to it. If you just cut out all your sugar, you will start jonesing for it. And so you have to, again, you have, we, with patients, we sort of take them down and it's little moves. You will be successful if you don't try to conquer the world, but just sort of incrementally going after things. Yeah, Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, you got that right. But yeah. if you build it, they will come. <laughs> right. Okay, here's something that a lot of people use, those pop-up timers, like when they're actually making their turkey. Do these things really work? Are they accurate in telling you if the turkey's done? Okay, actually, the I'm, I'm not a cooking expert, Julia Child style. However, the truth is, is that they will pop, but they pop at a much higher level. The FDA recommends that turkeys get cooked to 165 degrees. So these pop-up timers usually pop at about 180, 185, and most of the time when they pop, actually the turkey's even overcooked. So just taking the turkey out at 165 and letting it sit, it will actually continue to cook anyway. So the best way to test it is not those pop-up timers, but actually taking a true meat thermometer and sticking it in the deep portion of the thigh or the wing so that you can actually test the meat with the thermometer. Once you think it's done. Correct. And then you'll know whether to put it right. back in the oven. That's right. Using the pop-up timer is, is not accurate and oftentimes leads to a calamity with the turkey in and of itself. Oh, I never even thought about that. All right, good to know. Okay, last up, canned versus fresh. So is fresh pumpkin better than canned pumpkin? Okay, in this case, canned pumpkin is, if it has no additives and no preservatives in it, yes, it still has the same iron and the potassium and the nutrients that it needs. But you have to be careful where it's the creamy pumpkin pie or the pears and it's in a syrup that's heavy in sugar. This is where things go from potentially healthy and having nutritional benefit to being watered down and potentially losing all of its nutritional benefit. Okay, what about canned versus fresh in general? Because like I hear a lot of people say that canned vegetables are actually better than the vegetables that you or, buy, or at least I don't know that they're better, but but, but as well, yes, it is the same. And a lot of times, buying in the frozen section so you can keep it so it doesn't go bad over a period of time is a nice way to sustain cooking vegetables and using them for longer periods of time instead of leaving them in the refrigerator and eventually they just rot. Right. All right. Good stuff. Big thanks to Dr. Steve. We always learn a little something. Good to see you.